All right, Shalom, Aki. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give all praises and highest honors to Hell Yah Bashem Yah Shah, um, Bashem Makaf Wadash. Um, salutations to all you brothers out there doing these works in truth and sincerity. Shalom, brother Ariyagi, um, from the Grand Rapids camp. Um, it's coming at you with another lesson. So I'm going to uh, the circular history surrounding the Northern captivity or the Northern slavery. Um, it's a series I desire to do, um, starting out with uh, my own present tribe, tribe of people, um, so-called Puerto Ricans. And <clears throat> one of the things I want to go into today, as you can see with the picture, those are Ephraimites, are uh, Arawak Indians, as they're known also throughout circular history. And this is the persecution, persecution that they faced coming um, from the, what is that, the Span Spaniards, okay, this is what they, they get the label of being Spanish from, okay, so these are the same devils, these are Edomites as well, don't get it twisted, right, they're just from a different portion of the land, um, <clears throat> and they, they put hell on these so-called Puerto Ricans, or Tiano Indians, which was pretty much all those tribes, Tiano and Arawak Indians, who occupied that land in that area of the Hispaniola Islands at that point in time, in the ancient world, uh, in the past, and to this present day. Um, I'll go into also the history of how they got there, and that connection that we have to actually being part of the 12 tribes of Israel. So, what brought me to first conclusion? I went through a couple of articles. Um, let's see. I found this article right here. Abagon. It says the Theano Genocide. <clears throat> so I'll do some reading into this circular history. Then I'll be bringing forth um, some scriptures as we go in. The Theano Genocide. 1492-1518 is where the Spanish wiped out most of the Tianos, Arawaks, the native people of the Northern Caribbean, present-day Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, etc. Columbus himself set in motion and oversaw it until, uh, until the 1500s. According to one estimate, genocide and disease wiped out 3 million of the 3.5 million Tianos, 85%, um, most were already dead when smallpox arrived in 1518. <laughs> right, because um, they weren't exposed to these Edomites like the other tribes were, the southern tribes were. Southern tribes were um, exposed to them in an earlier time. Um, <coughs> being in captivity under them and serving under them and actually having kingdoms over them in the dark ages, okay? And after the dark ages. And they were in direct vicinity of them. So that helped a lot with the immune system of conquering them and being over them and having to live around them, even serve under them in the Roman Empire and, you know, serving over them in the Holy Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire. And so, one of the main things that we go into and find out is the horrific nature of the captivity that those of the northern tribe also went through, okay? The main emphasis is on Judah. Um, that was a local, that was very local because us in America have seen the atrocities that they committed against the southern tribes, especially northern and southern, but starting with the northern, all right, because the heads of uh, the tents of Judah should be raised first, right? So the heads of Judah, which was Abba Bivens and <clears throat> um, the apostles and the heads of the apostles and their teachers and one west, um, Aria and <clears throat> Daikwav, they were of the southern tribes, okay? And then they were the tents, uh, part of the tents of Judah, which is Benjamin and Levi, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who risen first, the word came unto them. 
Okay. And that was so the other tribes didn't get proud and get ahead of them. But it says most were already dead when smallpox arrived in 1518. Right? So they didn't have a uh, developed immune system to the filthiness of these devils because they had been exposed to them. And this was really, you know, outside of the ancient world, this was really the time that, you know, it was thousands of years before, you know, it really came up under that filthiness of these devils, man. Columbus noticed two things about the Tianos. They wore gold jewelry, and their most advanced weapon was the spear. Columbus with 50 men, um, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. All right, and they had to advance in technology then, even as they do now, over our people. Columbus made Latina, Latiana, the land of Tianos, into a living hell. It went way beyond simply killing those who fought Spanish rule. The Spanish um, had the Tianos grilled, cut up into pieces like sheep run down by hunting dogs and torn to pieces and strung up and burned alive 13 at a time in memory of Jesus and his 12 apostles, which tells you the whole religious driving force behind them. Um, Jesus, or Cesare Bozier, was a bunch of bullshit. That wasn't our Lord, the Father, um, the Son of the Most High, Yahweh Shai. That they did these things under, and the twelve apostles, according to the Bible, that uh, 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 or according to the uh, the true twelve tribes of Israel, that was some um, <clears throat> fabrication slapped together to give them further motivation into thinking that they had the right to rule. Okay, that's why they God was white, and Jesus loves everybody, um, and he was a so-called white man. Okay, so. They like to grill us and cut us into pieces like sheep. You know, one of the things we know that the so-called white man likes to do, he likes to eat flesh, man, human flesh. So that's nothing new there, okay? We already know how these devils get down. We know they have these uh, vile affections and things of that nature. So, you know, that's nothing new under the sun. They were ch 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 uh, excuse me, chopping us up like grilled chicken, you know, putting us on the grill. That's some wicked ass shit. Matter of fact, let me show that picture, man. Tripping. Gotta show the picture. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, that was gotta pay for this shit, man. For what they did to all the tribes, man. You don't pay in these different ways. <laughs> oh, look at that. You know, they burnt them, tied them up by the 13. You know, and burnt them up, starting with their feet. I told my children about how they did that to our people. Started by burning them up at the feet on the way up. Because uh, that's a terrifying feeling. All the nerve endings, we have most nerve endings in our hands and feet on the bottoms. That's why they're so sensitive. And uh, those being melted off and seared off by hot fire. I mean, that's a, a terrible way to go out. Excuse me, because you, you're tormented before your death. It was a grievous torment. Okay, all all torments are grievous. Yeah. That in particular was a pretty, you know, jacked up way to go out. So let's go into some scriptures. All right. Let's see. Where should we begin? <laughs> Um, let's see. And you know what? I think I should do a little bit more reading into this before I go into some of these scriptures to back them up. Not like Swarley, because it's getting to a real significant point that a lot of the scriptures that I chose are pointing out. So, um, I'm going ahead. It says they kill even women and children, even babies. 
right, which is also not synonymous with um, the Southern Tribes captivity. Or they were known to, uh, you know, feed their children to the alligators, man. Our brothers to the alligators, our brothers and our sisters, you know. Cut them open, make them alligator bait, and then bust the, um, as the alligators ate our children, you know, they would club them over the head and, or shoot them and make them into um, a commodity. Uh, leather skin, or excuse me, leather skin, crocodile skin, belts and shoes, things of that nature, purses and shit. So they even killed women and children, even babies. The Spanish threw babies against the rocks and into rivers and laughed. Fucking faggots laugh at that. Just like they laugh at the so called um, black man when the, the southern tribes plight when they did the same thing to them. Alright, except it started with the northern tribe. That's how they knew how to do the southern tribe. It started with them first. The Spanish threw babies against rocks and into the river and into rivers and laughed. And cut off pieces of Tianos for entertainment. They cut off the heads for practice. They raped women and girls and brought back syphilis to Europe. They even raped the wife of a king. Man, it says the Spanish were kinder to their animals than to the animals. It reminds me of the Chateau slavery, man. Reminds me just of the Chateau slavery, which um the French the French identified that amongst the uh, American. Um, the Edomite, American Edomites, the Chateau slavery is basically um, sh uh, cattle slavery in French. So that's in the comparison to this as well. The Spanish were kinder to their animals than to the Tianos. If a Tiano were killed, a Spaniard, uh, if a Tiano killed a Spaniard, the Spanish killed a hundred Tianos in return. They killed Tianos by the thousands. Uh, even those who brought them food and gifts. They killed half of the people of the kingdom of Maguana. All right. All right, you see how large that land is. They just killed the majority of them all right for no apparent reason. Which, you know, through our history, we should, we've known the violent so-called white man not to need a reason to do any of these atrocities because he's the devil incarnate, okay? His father is, is Tyler Ra, the adversary of Satan. So they don't really need a reason to do any of the wickedness that they do. <sighs> These devils just fall right in line because it's natural to them. It's just Naomi 3 and 10. And ye, and, uh, yet she was carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. And they cast lots for her honorable men. And all her great men were bound, uh, were bound in chains. Right. All her honorable men were bound in chains, man. Okay. That's captivity. Same captivity that we're going into. But like I said, um, her young children also were dashed in pieces. That's one thing. The northern and the southern tribes, um, they have many similarities in their captivities. And that's one of them. Okay. Was the dashing in pieces of our children. Excuse me. This is uh, Hosea 13 and 16. Samaria, which is which was basically another name for the northern kingdom of Israel. Um, the ten tribes of Israel. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her power. They have, or uh, they shall fall by the sword. That infants shall be dashed in pieces, and the women with child shall be ripped up. Excuse me. And that's one thing all of our ca um our captivity captivities society had in um common, you know, our children being dashed in pieces, women being raped, ravished, and cut open and shit, you know. This is the thing that our enemies did, and yet you celebrate. You know, Columbus Day, like, it's some great thing. 
Yeah, it's a great thing. It's greatly wicked. And a lot of people know not what they want shit. That's why they go along with that wicked ass shit. And get a couple days off or whatever the fuck may happen on that day. Not knowing what was really behind it. It was a straight genocide. Um, let's see. The Psalms 137 and 6. If I do not remember thee, let not my let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joys. Right, because you don't pro if, if our people don't prefer Jerusalem as our chief joy, you know, you go out to these other nations and worship them and their customs. Like uh Wu Tang, the RZA. He love he wanna be a goof so bad, you know. He, he's infatuated with that kung fu shit, not knowing that the true origin was our people. And even if he does know, because he was around, he went to the school in One West and stuff for a while. So he's not ignorant to these things, and yet he still gravitates to those goofs. All right? To those so-called um, Chinese and uh, Ammonite men. When our, when our history was way more colder than that, they got the art of war or, or martial arts down to this discipline that we have it uh, that they know it as of now we mastered that first you know and everybody else falling fell in after it um it says remember oh yahweh by shimmy outside the children of edom in the day of jerusalem who said raise it raise it even to the foundation thereof O daughter of babylon who art thou uh who are to be destroyed happy shall he be that rewardeth thee, and thou hast served us. Happy shall he be, that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Right, and our people's going to be happy when it's our turn to do these things unto the ones that have done it to us. Now, I want to get further into that, but I realized that I missed a key and vital point, which is how <clears throat> those ten tribes got to the Hispaniolas in the first place into Americas in the first place. So let's see, second Ezra 14, I mean 13 and 43. So let's go on down. All right, so let's start at 40. I want to start at 39. And whereas thou sawest the, he, uh, that he gathered another peaceable multi multitude unto him. All right, the majority of our people was conquered in that sense, especially at that time, those of the northern tribe, because they took, uh, they took, they saw that they were goodly people, peaceable people. But uh, those Edomites, <laughs> Salaki, so those Edomites took advantage of the fact that we were peaceable people. And they exploited that, and they used it against us. You know, we, we didn't fight amongst each other or seek to dominate land, lands that weren't ours that didn't belong to us by inheritance. That wasn't, that's not, our, that was not AO. We stayed pretty much in the land that we was given and enjoyed our lands. <laughs> right? So we are peaceable people. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Osea the king who Solomon is all the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them out of the waters, and so came they into another land. And they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a part of the country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. All right. So when they went a whoring after these other nations, Assyria, or Syria in this sense, Assyria <clears throat> into that captivity. Captivity. Uh, Salaki. Okay. It's been a long day. Um, under the Assyrians, and when they went into that captivity underneath them, you know they went to hoard after their gods, and they 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 pretty much turned to them just like most of our nations in the nation of Israel, the separate tribes go hoarding um in those times of famish to Egypt, you know, 
and seek them for power and jobs the same way our people do to this very day when they turn to America for all their wants and needs and judgments and judges and, you know, instead of turning to the most high first, you know, they seek their answers from their enemies. But they took this counsel, oh, and like I said, where they never, where never man quite, um, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Right, because at that time, um, through the expeditions that King Solomon had coming over here was the different Sibian sailors, which were hermetic sailors, right? And they came over here and they would collect different animals, exotic birds and exotic fruits and things of that nature. Let me see if I can find it real quick, actually, because that's a pretty significant part as well. Now I remember, let's see. Right, you bear with me, please. It's right, you motherfuckers act stupid sometimes. A P E S. Let us see. All right, so first Kings ten and twenty one, and all the and all of King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold, none of silver. It was nothing accounted in the days of Solomon, for the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish, which uh, with the navy of Haram, which the Hamatic nations. Okay. So, Tharshish and um, Tharshish and Haram, Hamitic nations, or African nations. Once in three years, came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes. I mean, ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Right. And the place that were coming to get those peacocks and those apes and silver and ivory, ivory, excuse me, was to the U.S. At that time, it was known of another name. It wasn't inhabited at that point in time, because at that time, all of our people were on the homestead of Israel in Jerusalem and around in the surrounding areas in Judea. Okay. And all the, the northern and southern tribes were still in those areas, heavily populated. We still had our kingdom, even though Ephraim went into captivity under Syria. You know, you still had some before the split that dwelt amongst the southern tribes. Um, so let's go and finish that little circular history of. All right, because it said where well, never a mankind dwelt. So you see that they went there every three years and they collected these things and they came right back. Okay, with these precious goods. So nobody dwelt in that time, that that place at that time, which is known as America to, at this day, which is bitter, which is Latin for bitter, because um, it's a place of our captivity. That they are the forty-second verse. That they might they are keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow place of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. All right, and they were passing through the horn of Africa, right? So let's see. Let's see.
babies. Alright, so see we'll find a good match. So they did. And the captivity of Syria. took the Euphrates River and then went all the way down into the Persian Gulf. Right? Let's see if I can find a better map. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a bigger map. A better suit. These needs, cause we only get a piece of the pie. I wanted to go into. I should have just went to a world map, but I want to see if this serves a good purpose. Let's see. Let's put in Leo Frady's, oh man. Spell check is so stupid. Not just necessarily spell check, just pressing these buttons. You know, you saw his technology. So let's see, bear with me for a second, please. <laughs> World nap. This one would do. Um, well, this shit clear up after it loads. Let's see if I have to find another map. Okay, let me try another map. And it's a lot here. Try to make our presentation a lot clearer than it is. That was all messed up. All blurry. I really want to get in depth into this. Let me stop clicking on these down. Price maps and shit. Well, the price maps they selling at Walmart. It's messing it all up. So let's see. So basically, the captivity has a lot of similarities. All of the tribes' captivities have vast similarities to the wickedness and the cruelty that was brought upon our heads out of all the tribes, you know? So. You know, we're in America not to sit back and relax and enjoy this. You know, just raise children and enjoy everything that's before us because this is not our rest, it's polluted. And in it being polluted, we were sent here to serve out our captivity. Okay? And in that captivity that they were serving out, this is slavery. It's not some great thing. All right. So, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Euphrates River. And right there in Syria, flowing all the way down into Iraq, through Iraq, into the Gulf. Um, not the Red Sea, but into a gulf. Uh, the exact name of that gulf. See? You gotta be on it. You gotta be on it, brothers. That's one of the main things, is to stay on it. And really know the names of these bodies of water into the Arabian Sea. Right? And as it went to the Arabian Sea, 
or went around the Horn of Africa, where the Most High held back the storms, so the storms didn't rip us apart because you get some of the most horrific storms in this area over the Atlantic around the Horn of Africa. We sailed up around the Horn of Africa, right, into the Hispaniolas, into South America and North America, where we occupied, okay? Uh, let's continue that on in the Apocrypha. It says, And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river, for the Most High he didn't show signs for them, and hell still the flood until they were passed over. Although the country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and the same region was called uh, Arsa, Arsa. So that's what it was called at that point in time. Then dwelt they there, or Aratazan which is the world, excuse me, not the Aratazai, uh, which is um, pretty much the world in general translation to the Paleo-Hebrew. Uh, Arsareth was America at that point in time, but it wasn't called America because it wasn't claimed and given the name bitter by <coughs> um, these devils at that point in time. It says... Then dwelt they are um, Latins or the Spaniards, the Spanish, which gave them the name America, which is bitter. America. Uh, it's 46 verse. Then dwelt they there until the latter time. And now, when they shall begin to come, the highest shall, um, the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore saw they the multitude with peace. Right, so we went through there and we dwelt in peace. You know, that's why when these Edomites came, we weren't so technologically advanced, especially in the sense of um, warfare. You know, we had a beautiful agriculture going, and, you know, we lived in peace and harmony with each other. We had our scuffles and things of that nature, but it wasn't to the point where we were trying to completely eradicate each other. We respect, we respect the boundaries and when they were crossed, they got into it, but most... Um, most of the time they dwell peaceably. Alright. So let us go back into the destruction of our children. Let's see. Let's get back to the article real quick. Finish that out. Read these few scriptures and then uh, can get on out of here. Alright. Well, he went to, they killed the women and children. Alright. They threw them onto the rocks and busted their heads. And laughed and enjoyed that shit. After the killing fields, the Spanish divided the remaining Theanos among themselves to teach them um, the Christian faith. For Theano men have been working in the mines, often being worked to death. As many as 90% died within three months. For Theano women have been working the land, even the heavy work that men used to do. So they worked us to death. You can my men got worked to death and ninety percent of them was worked to death. Like man, that's a terrifying thing, man. You know? Ninety percent of your men worked to death in the mines, man. God damn. So you know these devils was popping the shit of our women. As you can see, this day. You can see within the different hues and lighter skin colors or the lighter browns. Okay. Let's see. It says Hosea seven and eight. Ephraim is mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth it not. All right. So, 
you know, 90% of our men being killed off. That's where you get the dark brown, like my father personally, he was an Ephraimite man, and he was, yeah, I was shy brown. He was very, 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 very dark. All right, he was a dark brother. And he was, you know, his father was straight out of Puerto Rico. His dark brother too. And due to those different captivity and the whoredoms that we had with other nations, Ephraim um, mixed itself with amongst the people. Ephraim was a lighter, a lighter color than a lot of the other tribes or just like the other tribes are lighter now. Uh, Ephraim was the head of that. So Ephraim is the head tribe of the northern tribes. So it really goes in the general concept of talking about all the other tribes as well of the northern tribes, other ten tribes. And you know they like to mix themselves amongst the other nations. Okay, so that color was worn down to heaven. And that's why I said he's like an unturned, a cake not turned. Let me see. It says, let's go to Hosea 3 and. We can go to Hosea 3 and 4. Hmm. Lucky, I can read it. It is 4 7. This is Hosea 3 and 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. These are all of the priestly things that the Levites were uh, appointed to do, to handle these priestly items. Okay, and these were some of the things that are some of the, the tools that we use to communicate with Yahweh. And seek him out and find out what he would have us do in battle or in, um, you know, plant, famine or plague came upon the land or who should go forth first in the battle, different things, okay? Um, and the, um, the ephod had the different stones for each tribe on it, okay? So 12 different stones. And the teraphim, okay? And after she, um, and afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek out by Shemi Yahweh Shai, their God. And David their king, and shall fear Yahweh by Shemiah Shai and his goodness in the latter days. And, you know, starting with the elected, the hopeful elect, that's what that is pointing to in the latter days. We are in the latter days right now, okay? And the hopeful elect of Ephraim and the rest of the tribes of Israel will serve and worship the Most High in his true name and form, okay? And for those, the majority of our people that got caught up in a lot of that, we left away from serving the Most High because it says into a land um, well, we should worship the Lord. They didn't even do that in their own land, so how are they going to go to a separate land and do that amongst another land? You know, they kept it for a while, but then they started straying as we often did, even until this day, as the other gods. So they have four or five. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. And I was destroyed like mother. The mother of us all is Jerusalem. And Jerusalem ended up coming in and um, being besieged in 70 AD by the Roman Empire. Continuing on in Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt no more, uh, shall be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. Right, because that separation and that split that took place between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, um, they expelled, the northern tribe expelled the Levites. And when they expelled the Levites, um, as they expelled them, they set up their own priests after them. Okay? And the seventh verse. And they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I would change their glory and shame. They eat up and sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. Right. So they eat up the sin of our people. One of the ways that they've done that is set forth um, and coming in captivity under them. They set forth an unlawful dietary plan before us, causing us to eat swine's flesh and all kind of abominable things. Even in this captivity, I read that we was eating rabbits and turtles and shit. Mm -hmm. 
you know, just abominable things in general. But they eat up the sin of my people and they set their heart on their iniquity. Right. So they played on it. A lot of us are just, just um, Ephraimites was getting fucked up from worshiping other gods in the first place, turning against Yahweh by some young son. And they shall be like people, uh, and there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward their doing. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase, because they have left off to take uh, left off to take heed of Yahweh by Shem Shai, hoard them in new wine, take away the heart. And that whoredom is going after these other um, gods, and these other doctrines and philosophies of these other nations, man. And they take away your heart, which is your mind, cause you to start a whoring after them. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declare unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err, and they have gone whoring from under their power, right, and that's why they are uh, like an unturned cake, and it, this was pretty much a punishment from Yah by Shem Yah Shai for them going off and worshiping these other guys in another land. Okay, so let us see. Let's read the rest of that and read these last couple of scriptures and get on out of here. Uh, it says there was so little food that babies died for lack of milk children died of hunger by the uh, thousands men will work so hard in the mines that few children were born which means they made up the bread of that and sowing tears amongst the enemy the ter enemy sowed tears amongst our people Columbus demanded a certain amount of gold or cotton from uh, East Diano over the age of 13. Those who failed to meet his demands had their hands cut off. Hey, God, that's some raw business, man. You know, can't get you what you need or what you require. What they gonna do? They cut your fucking hands off, man. Okay, and I had a depiction of that very thing. Let's see. Um... Let's see if I can find it. Let us see. I'm going to get into that as well. Because, you know, Jake and... Uh, the southern and the northern tribes was in that captivity as well. So let us see. Um, that was another picture. Uh, here it go right here. It retained us into that very thing. If we didn't pay them the right amount of gold or the right amount of cotton, this is what they would do to us. They cut our fucking hands off. See my man chopping their hands off and shit. Then you got this other asshole over here cutting off their noses and shit up in the upper up right hand corner. They like, couldn't resist. They ain't have any hands. Chop your hands off the scene, you get your, your nose chopped the fuck off. And then we let a bunch of dogs eat on you and gnaw on your ass. As you can see in the background. Alright, dogs ripping them apart. Then you look further into the background, you see them charge you very back off the hill. You can see them charging them down and making them fall off the fucking hill, man. To they death. All right, this dumb fucking devil think he ain't got to pay for this shit, man. Think you getting away with that like you're going to be giving the kingdom as well after doing this shit to the Most High's elect. You know, which was amongst them. This is the Most High's chosen people. Kicked them the fuck down. Broke them up, man. You know, these devils got to pay for this shit. Which brings me to my next scripture. Oh, 
right. So let's see. This is Revelation. If it man, let's see. Revelation 13 and 10. And he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he who killeth with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Right, because the patience and the faith that we have is the way for Yahweh Shai. And the faith is that he will justify all the things that have been done to us by these other nations, starting with the so-called white man. Okay? We wait on the most high to justify us because we seek to do that ourselves. It's like seeking the throne of preeminence. All we're going to do is fall into the same diverse lust without him, even if we were able to somehow to deliver ourselves. Only thing that will um, happen in the end is falling into the same lust and history will repeat itself. So we have to wait on your hour shy because he can do it perfectly. Revelation 18 and 6, reward her even as she rewarded you, double unto her according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, uh, filled to her double. Right, but the devil's got to pay double for the things that they did to us, because you sinned against the apple of the Most High God. Therefore, you had to pay in a remarkable way, perpetual way. Okay? You ain't got to take my word for it. History it speaks for itself. Because the Most High will deliver His people. And let us see. He says, he says, All this was shocking behavior by Western standards of the time. So it was unseen at that time. And when they carried it on to the southern tribes, it's because they perfected in the northern tribes first. Well, when there were no longer enough Diano workers left, I mean, they killed them so bad, there wasn't even enough workers left, man. You see? So it says, when there, um, when there were no longer enough Diano workers left, the Spanish brought in African slaves to take their place. So they brought in the southern tribes. Uh, which is Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. It was such a hell on earth that mothers killed their babies and mass suicides were common. Many fled to the mountains. Blacks too. So he, Judah too. Fighting Spanish from there. Cute, one of the Yano kings of Cuba, told his people to throw their gold into the river. The Christians worship gold as their God, and would kill them for it. Right, because they worship mammon. Our people chose death over their gold. These devils, that's their main driving force, is gold. See how they scalped our heads? That's why the top of his head is bald like that, because they scalped the fuck out of us, man. They ain't like putting gas in a movie scalping somebody. No, nah, it was you devils that did that shit. <laughs> and then you would get paid for those scalps. So as many scalps as you would bring in. Okay? You look at dancers with wolves. <sighs> Lucky. Shit. In 1512, when uh, Hatio Akute was about to be burned at the stake, a uh, Franciscan brother told him about the Christian faith, which we know Christian are to anoint, right? That Christian faith that they believed in was backed by Cesare Bogier and the Catholic Church. So it was religion. This wasn't the true faith of the truth. So this is what he chose over worshiping Cesare Bogier. Him about the Christian faith to save his soul. When Hatier found out that most good Christians were going to heaven, he chose hell. Right, because little did he know he was already in hell. You know? All that hell that was being brought upon him at that time was <laughs> enough to say, fuck it, get me out of here, man. I don't want to deal with this shit. All right, I don't know who this brought is. Nina, some. I'm fine now. Jake. Damn. 
but I don't care. I'm gonna bring out this last couple scriptures and end this off because I am a marathon man. I seek to do it short, and the Most High says, "Nope, we're gonna we're gonna stretch it out a little bit, bring a little more edification through." This is Isaiah, and this is coming off the slavery that they're going to. This is what's going to happen to these devils for everything they did to us. Isaiah 13 and 12, I will make a man more precious than the fine gold, even a man than the, gold, the, golden, than the golden wedge of our fear. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, and the wrath of Yah by Shemuel of hosts. And in the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as a chaste roe, as a sheep that no man taketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one to his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto him shall fall by the sword. It's not gonna be no. I have black friends. I have white friends. You know, it's not gonna. It's segregation is gonna make a comeback amongst all nations. Um, Israel's going to be joined together as one stick again, you know, because one thing that we have seen is persecution brings our people together. Look at the L.A. riots. Um, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Right. So they children, as they did our children, their children are going to be dashed to pieces now. And what happens when you dash their children to pieces? After they done, they're going to ravish their wives. That's great, okay? These things are biblical. It's in the Bible, and that's why they're going to try to do away with it. Because this truth, is, it, it cuts deep. And when that truth cuts that deep, the only thing that these devils can do is get rid of it and seek to suppress it even further, you know? So, I mean, that's the proof in the pudding. That's just um, the first installment. Um that the Spirit put it on me to go ahead and bring out for the captivity of the nations. Or, uh, excuse me, for the captivity of Jake. All right, you know, just take another look at these pictures before I get up out of here. And the atrocity that they did against our people. You know, and they stand acting like they're innocent. Um, well, nothing is innocent about the things that they did to us. And still doing to us to this day. And the only reason the ancestors have any kind of wealth or money is because they took it from us being put in this same condition. All the gold and the jewels that they have now is blood jewels and gold. That's all belonging to us. Alright. And this is um, Isaiah 14. And we can start at 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou have destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. The pair that slaughtered are prepared slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. That they, be, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. What are they talking about? The wicked automatically go to same people you see in this picture. The same ones that had a hand in the transatlantic slave trade. The one that put all 12 tribes in slavery. All nations, starting with the so-called white man. Look at that. Hands on the ground. Man. Man. You know, Jake was wicked as hell, and the most high allowed it to happen. You know? And... Says, for I will rise up against them, saith Yahweh by Shemiah Shai of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction, saith Yahweh by Shemiah Shai of hosts. And Yah by Shemiah Shai of hosts have sworn, saying, Surely, as I, uh, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have proposed, so shall it stand. And Yah by Shemiah Shai, Yahweh is the son of the Father, uh, is the name of the Heavenly Father. 
And Yahushua is the name of the Son, Bashem is in the name of. So in case you are new to this and you were wondering, Yahweh is the name of the Father, and Yahushua is the name of the Son. All right, so that's the end of this lesson. This is part one. Um, I'd like to give all praises and all right, so honors to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushua. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushua, Rakat, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who do rule well. And to all the brothers who, in great, starting with Great Millstone and all those who push his work in truth and sincerity. Yahweh, Shalom. Until next time. Remember this lesson. I hope it's been edifying to you. Until then, Shalom.